We welcome our listeners to the Friendly Cross-European podcast. I'm Carolina from Finland and joining me is Marion from France. We are the outspoken too and we invite you to be your authentic self. In this episode, we are going to talk about who we are, how we met and how this podcast came to be. Welcome and let's go! So, Marion, we are going to introduce ourselves in this episode. So, would you like to start? Yes. Um, so, I'm Marion. I come from France. I'm 26 when we recorded this podcast. I have a full-time work as a lab technician. And Carolina, would you please introduce yourself? Of course. Uh, nice to meet you guys. I'm Carolina. I live in the north of Finland. I'm a musician and I work in um, audiovisual communications. Okay, so I think we should uh, talk about a bit how this get podcast came to be. So you came to France. Yes, I have lived in Paris for one year and a half in total. That's how we met. Yeah, and you were in my class. And you look like a friend of mine. So I was like, it's weird. She looks so much like her. I'm going to talk to her. Why not? So I talked to you and we became friends almost immediately. Yeah, I remember. You were my first friend from the physics year we were at. And I was so grateful because I didn't know anyone and you started talking with me. You were there and I talked to you and then we clicked immediately. Mm. That was good. We spent a month and a half, I think, like hanging together every day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, having sleepovers and just talking, talking, it's, it never stops. No, that's why we're making a podcast, because we know we can talk and talk and talk, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can be lost one night together just talking. I love it about our friendship. And every time we catch up, we are just starting from where we left off with uh, our friendship. And I value that a lot. Yes, that's truly amazing to be able to just pick where we left off. We see each other like once every two years. It was our pattern before the pandemic and I couldn't come on the four year mark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Because I remember you were planning your trip and watching for plane tickets and then a lockdown. <laughs> so. Yes, that's, that's true. I was like, am I going to like ask for my boss to have vacation days and everything? And then I was like, I'll ask them later because no one stayed there on vacation in April. So I knew that I didn't have to like ask like two, three months, three months in advance. Mm. But I, I was happy that I didn't plan that much in advance. <laughs> Because it would be bad with the plane companies and everything, like saying, yes, you can still come, but everything is closed and I cannot go out of my place. Yes, but you can still come. We're not going to reimburse you and everything. So mm. I still plan on it, but I'm waiting for travel to be more open and that everyone is vaccinated. Mm. A better timing. It has been, I think, six or seven years since I've been in Paris, so I would love to come there as well. I miss the language a lot. Yeah, I think it was... Uh, you were there in 2015. So, yeah, six years now. Mm. <laughs> and actually, it's funny that we are now recording this podcast because we had been talking about this since I lived in France that it would be beautiful to create this uh, content. And uh, when I left France, you thought that our friendship was finished. Yeah, because you actually invited me to come to Finland with you on the February break. 
but we were supposed to go together yeah. and not me alone <laughs> going to see you. So yeah. I thought that it, it was not going to happen. And then we started talking and you said, you're still coming in February. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't plan that at all. And I asked for my parents because the tickets to Finland is expensive for that to be my like um, Christmas gift. And they said yes. So I took the tickets and then I bought the flight. And the whole time I'm like, why am I so stupid? <laughs> I'm a stupid, stupid girl. I'm going to go to another country where I don't speak the language to see a girl that I've met for a month, <laughs> six <laughs> months ago. I'm crazy. <laughs> and I was like so afraid and I was so stressed because I'm always stressed. Like if I have to go a party with my friends, I'm stressed. <laughs> But this one, I was like truly like <gasps> no. <laughs> going insane. And I was like, she's not going to pick me at the airport. Uh, I would be stuck for a week in another country. I'll have to pay for the hotel and everything. And I was like, I'm broke. I cannot do that. <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> and then you came to pick me at the airport. <laughs> yeah, I kept my word. Yes. And we had like an amazing vacation. And I think that cemented our friendship this trip. Yeah, I did. I had a very good time. I was very happy that you came to to visit me here in the cold north. When I came in February, I think it was like four hours of daylight. I don't know if you have the fully, like, no light. Yeah, I'm living 200 kilometers south from the Arctic Circle. So the worst is just uh, Christmas time. Uh, we have two to three hours then of daylight, but the uh, sun doesn't rise very high, so it's very like dark. Uh, if we go 200 kilometers up north, they don't have any sun anymore. I think this is a very good place to live because during the summer we have the nightless nights. And during wintertime, we still have at least a couple of hours of light during the day. It's really, really weird, the nightless nights yeah I, i've been at this time in april and we were like having a party with your friends and i remember going out at 2 a.m seeing still sunlight i'm like what the actual what's happening <laughs> and then going out at 4 a.m and seeing more sunlight and i'm like no that's not right <laughs> where is the night <laughs> Where is night? I don't understand because I live in France and in France we there is uh, like movements. We have like uh, days that are shorter and nights that are shorter as well, but not that much. Yeah, I remember it was so funny when I I was living there and in the during winter time. My friends are complaining when the sun comes up at eight o'clock and sets at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm like, oh, you know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we know nothing <laughs> about that. Actually, we know nothing. Yeah, it's actually very depressing during winter time, especially if one is an artist like me. I normally sleep till two o'clock in the afternoon. I work in the evening and night. And in winter time, if I don't wake up at 10 or 11 o'clock, I don't see any sunlight. It's always dark. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's the authentic uh, northern depressed artist experience. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coldest we have had is minus 42 degrees. And the warmest is like plus 35 degrees. That's like the extremes. And I was so happy in Paris when you have plus 10 in the, the uh, winter time as well. And it's for me, it was like a, a long autumn when the, the days are still warm for me. Everything over plus four is very good for me. 
Yeah, I've lived in Canada. We'll talk about it in another podcast. So I experienced like truly um, horrible temperature <laughs> because they have really extremes there also. And now that I'm in France, I'm like, you sissies, it's not cold here. <laughs> Yeah, I remember one of my friends had uh, frostbites on her hands when it was plus five degrees. And I'm like, how is this even possible? I would love to visit soon. I hope you can visit and I can go to Finland because I love it also. There is one thing I envy you very, very much is that you almost have everywhere saunas in every fucking house. And I love it. And I want that in my house. But in France, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think we have three million saunas for five million inhabitants. Uh, it's a cultural thing. We need that during the winter time. I loved it. I was really scared when we came to your friend's uh, house in the middle of nowhere. This is kind of crazy for me, but... This was my first sauna. We go to sauna. We got stripped naked. <laughs> and I was like wrapped in my towel. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Because nude is not really in our French culture at all. Being nude is not something we do. So I was like really scared and embarrassed and like very self-conscious. And you had this friend that I literally just met like two hours ago completely naked taking care of the fire and explaining to me in english how to do sauna and i'm like okay and then she says you have to to wash yourself first and for that you have to let the fucking towel go <laughs> so i was like oh, okay i don't have any choice so i've I, I washed myself and then I was like, she doesn't care, actually. She's not looking at me. She's not like, haha, or anything. She just doesn't care. And I'm like, I don't think I need this towel anymore. And it was the best experience in my life. And now I cannot get a sauna fast enough. And when people told me that they hate sauna because it's too hot and I'm like, but no one told you how to do it properly. There is a technique to not die inside. <laughs> you haven't been to Finland yet and gotten the authentic experience. Sauna is a place to relax. It's not a sexual place. Like I go to sauna with my male friends. No one cares. And actually, um, when I was studying at the university, We also had parties where everyone from the faculty is in the same sauna. The only time I wouldn't go to sauna is when there are some exchange students because you could hear them saying, where are all the naked girls? Haha, <laughs> we are going to watch them naked. And this is not what you do in sauna. Sauna is a place to relax, to talk, to be in silence, calmly. It's not a place where you are looking at each other's bodies and comparing them. This is why my friend wouldn't care, because we are not judging your body in the sauna. We are just there to relax and hang out and enjoy it in the winter cold or summer heat. And actually the nakedness in the Finnish culture is not that like uh, frowned upon. We don't have that many like beaches where you can be naked. But when I go to my friend's cottage where we were, During the summertime, we can just hang naked there. No one cares. It's a very lovely uh, experience with the nature and being your like uh, inner child, letting it free and just have fun. I love the cottage there. It was really like incredible. The nature, it's cold enough that there is no like living thing that you can hear. So there's no bird. You can, when I went to uh, walk, uh, to, to do a walk, 
and I was alone and the only thing that I could hear is my breath and uh, the sound of my boots on the snow and it was like really truly amazing I, I still remember it very fondly that's nice to hear in the summertime we have seen elks because uh, the cottage is near a lake. So last time I was there, we actually saw an elk swimming in the lake. And there are a lot of birds and such, but they moved the south for the, the winter. It's a different experience. And actually they have wolverines and reindeer there as well. It's a wild place here in Finland. Yeah, it's true. truly amazing, really. We are 5 million, approaching 6 million people here. It's the area same size as Germany. And a million people are living close to the capital. So we, the 4 million rest of us, have a lot of space here. I as well live in a relatively small town here. It has this small village feel to it still. Yeah, I like it too. I've been in the winter in not the summer, but the spring. And it was really nice. But I think now we can talk about how we came to do this podcast. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's a funny story because on one Sunday, I was taking out my dog. And I had this idea pop up in my head. And I'm like, now it's the time to do a podcast. And I started thinking, how could I do this? Who would be my go co-host? Because I don't want to talk alone for an hour. And I went to sleep. And when I woke up, I woke up to a text from you saying that you want to start a podcast <laughs> with me. <laughs> yes, because I was like listening to a conversation with from Philippe DeFranco. And uh, I was at work doing mindless job that didn't require, require my brain to like think of what I was doing. So I have, I went into my mind and started thinking and I listened to this podcast and I'm like, I want to do a podcast. I always wanted to do a podcast with Carolina. And then I had the name in my head stuck and... It's not this name because it was kind of already in use. Not really the same one, but so close that we couldn't use it. So we had to figure another name. But I had this name and I was just like, if I don't call, call her now, I'm going to chicken out and just forget about it and we'll never do it. So I said, I'm calling her. I called you, but it was too early for you. <laughs> Yeah, like 5 p.m. What were you thinking? <laughs> Why would I be awake? <laughs> yeah, and um, you were so still uh, at sleep. So I called you once. I think I called you twice, actually. And then I texted you saying, I have this idea for a podcast. Please call me back. Yeah, we have so many ideas for different podcasts. And I hope our listeners are going to be excited about these topics because we are going to compare cultures in our two different countries and we are going to compare uh, the culture from our background which, which is very similar and uh, that's another podcast again and I actually find it very heartwarming how this podcast came to be. I have so many of these uh, synchronizations where the timing is just right. We had the same idea, less than 24 hours apart from each other. It's crazy. These coincidences. I, we, I will be revealing some in a future episode as well, because my, my life is littered with them. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, but it wouldn't have happened if we were not both like in the same page about this. Since we've met, we said that we needed to make a podcast together. And now we are doing it. Please love it <laughs> so we can make more. <laughs> yeah, I think that the timing is just right now. I feel more confident in myself. 
Uh, we are going to talk about this in future episodes. I have been very insecure about my art and I think this is a form of art. So I have been too afraid to do it. I grew up from being so insecure so we can start doing this. And actually for the first episode we decided to talk about um, why we are doing this in English because we actually have another language in common, French. Yes, obviously I'm French, so my first language is French. And you came to France and you studied in French. And this is the first language that we used. Um, after that, I asked you if we could talk a bit in English because uh, in France, we are not good at languages. I have a better uh, level than a lot of people in France because we don't want to start learning English. So people didn't want to talk with me. So I asked you and you said yes. Yeah, my English is better than my French. Obviously, I have studied English so much more than French and English is used a lot. That's not completely true. You are better in English, but your French is remarkable for someone who spent only a year in France. Thank you. And that you don't talk that much in in French, but it's really good. Maybe once we'll make a small passage in French. Yeah. If someone requires it, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I love learning languages and they come easily for me. I started talking English really when I was 16. I didn't want to study it when I was younger. We start when we are nine years old. So by the time I'm 16, we have been um, thought seven years of English, but I just never took the time to learn it. I found it irritating and unneeded, uncalled for. And then when I was 16, I realized that if I just read the words for 10 minutes a night or something, I can get the best mark for the course. And after that, I, I started just developing my English skills and I realized that it comes very easily to me. And after that, uh, I'm on my seventh language at the moment that I'm studying. So I'm, I went a little bit nuts with them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not that good at languages. Uh, I speak good French. It's my first language, but I don't write it that good. Uh, there are subtitles for this on YouTube. If it's are any incorrectness in my French, sorry, <laughs> but I never learned properly. I had, I have a story on me learning French. It's um, in France when we, uh, when I was learning how to read and write, we had a method that is weird and not employed today because it's not working well. It's that you learn how to read a word, but like the complete word, and you just like memorize the word. Hmm? You're not learning how to make the sound and everything. You just learn the complete word and you like recognize it. It's like learning the color red. You see red, 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 but you're not understanding the color. That's weird. Yeah, it's not working on me. And uh, the uh, in France, the school year is from September to July. And in April of the first year where you start learning, uh, where you're supposed to be able to read after the, this year. Uh, I wasn't reading anything. And it was April. And so my mom started to freak out that I wasn't like, I wasn't able to read. So she taught me, but she's not a teacher and she's kind of a crazy person. So I'll go in detail. <laughs> I'll go in detail later. But she yelled at me when <laughs> I wasn't doing it right, saying that was dumb and like lots of mean words. So 
I didn't like it and I refused to read after that. I could do it, but uh, if you like try to read me a book or anything, I I made a blockage and I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it because it was too much for me. The experience had traumatized me and I wanted to not read. So it was the time where, when you were supposed to learn the basics of the how to write the language and how not to make like grammatical errors and stuff like that. So I didn't really learn because everything for French was a huge no-no for me. So I never really learned properly. I'm better now, but I'm not super good at it. Oh, yeah. That sounds hard. A French teacher actually, like, gave me a book to read for class. And it was, like, on archaeology. And I think everyone is going through a phase in their life where they want to be an archaeologist. <laughs> So it was a book on archaeology and Egypt and I loved it and then I started to read and now I'm an avid reader of fiction. Okay, good for you. Actually, French is a lovely language um, because you have only a limited amount of sounds and the same words are the, uh, written differently. Uh, uh, meaning different things but then you pronounce them the same or then you have words where only the article is different and it means a different thing o obviously in, in Finnish we don't have any articles we don't have she or he it, it was very difficult for me to start learning English because you have to separate the sexes which is crazy for me because we don't do that and uh, with the articles as well it was difficult. It's like, why would I change the article when we have spoken about this? And then I go to France and you have more articles. When I was living there in the beginning, I had to translate the sentence first to English in my head to be able to say it in French. Because from Finnish to French, there's a huge leap. I still, of course, make grammatical errors, but it doesn't matter in the spoken language especially with the articles. It's kind of hard to try and remember if it's feminine or masculine. I, of course, enjoy speaking French. It's one of the favorite languages I can, I can speak. In France, at the university, I was studying German in French. That was an experience as well, because you add more articles. And the uh, teacher was speaking French, of course. And my brain was so tired. Sometimes I couldn't uh, understand if she's speaking French or German because I understood what she's saying, but it wasn't my first or even second language. So it's like my fourth and fifth language that I'm studying at the same time. But I loved it. That's also how I, I picked up French. I just went right to the deep end of the pool and tried to swim there because I came there after learning the basics. Uh, when I was at the bank, for example, and started my account, I didn't understand what's written on the paper. Or when I uh, rented an, ap an apartment, I didn't understand what's happening there e either. And it was so funny because the uh, people, even at the university, didn't necessarily speak English. And that was so wild to me. The French really think that the French language is uh, very important and that it used to be the diplomatic language and everything. But the important part is used to be. <laughs> it's not anymore. For a long, long time, we didn't make any emphasis on speaking another language. It was French and if you didn't speak anything else no one cared and uh, the way we teach language in French is I don't think it's good I didn't learn uh, English in, in in school because it didn't work for me I don't think it works for anyone because it's truly insane how we do it and you never learn how to speak to someone you have teachers who don't speak or speak well English, they have terrible accents, 
Actually, the it's a fun story how I learn English. I was really bad at it um, in the beginning. I started when I was, I think, eight. Yes, yeah, something like that. Eight or nine. For me, it was because we had a teacher that was speaking English. But normally, you start at 11 for my age group. And at 11, you start having classes like one or two hours a week. That's not enough. You have someone who barely speaks English that mostly speaks to you in French. And you just learn vocab. So it didn't work for me. So my parents uh, paid for a private tutor teaching me. I went on a vacation where in the morning I had classes in English. And the end the afternoon I was visiting. It was in Dublin. Love the stories there as well. And I wasn't that bad, but I wasn't great. And yeah. And then I started to have an addiction to TV shows. So I started to watch them in French. And then I couldn't wait for them to be dubbed. So I started to watch them in English with the subtitles in French. And then my addiction got worse. And I started to have to see them when they got out. So at three in the morning. So I I couldn't wait for the subtitles to come to French. And I started actually watching without subtitles at all. That's a good way. Yeah, it came like this really smoothly. I cannot tell when I started to like really understand English there's not a year something I've learned that revolutionized my my the way I saw the language the thing I can tell is when I was 16 I was really good at it and because my teacher was really bad at it she hated me for it oh that sucks yeah some uh in French you are graded on a 20 basis and she made like um, a weird exercise where we had to pretend we were on a TV show where everyone was going to um, to grade and pick out the, your favorite at the end. You know, like send a text if you liked the first one or the second one. And everyone was grading on 18 except the first one who was graded on 20. And because there are there were a lot of great uh, presentations, she chose five per person would get the twenty the possibility to get the twenty. They had the two points for being chosen. And I made mine on something horrible. I don't know why my classmate chose my story <laughs> and put it on the top five. But it was on lapidation, you know, throwing stone at people. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my, that's that's hard. Yeah, it was really dark. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was stuck in my head. And I had to do that a presentation. And it was a day before the presentation had to happen. And this thing was stuck in my head. And I said, this is what I have to do. This is what I have to do. This is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's insane. It's a terrible story. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not the um, lightest subject, to say the least. No, the one who won was a story about bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the same kind of stuff. So, yeah, I've done mine and I was voted on the top five. And the point she refused to give me, to give me a full mark of 20 was of pronunciation. She couldn't talk at all. She was really a bad teacher, but <laughs> she had a terrible, terrible accent. So I was really mad because she could have taken this point anywhere. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't mind. And I know my pronunciation is not perfect. This is not my first language, but I know I'm better than anyone else in this class and better than her. So I'm like, this is not where you should have taken the point. Yeah, yeah. This is insane. And I had her for the, like, the baccalaureate, the, the first, the last exam you have 
uh, of like high school. A levels. Yeah. And she was the one who graded my uh, pronunciation, my oral. And I had a five minute presentation to make and the five minute of question to answer about my presentation. And I know my English. I know it. So I make the, this fucking perfect presentation. And then comes to the question. And she didn't understand a thing that I said. And I'm like. Oh. So I, I spend the five minutes of the question. Not answering any question. But just trying to explain what I said to her. Oh my. So you had better vocabulary than the teacher. Yeah, because she was really bad at it. Oh. So when I had my grade, I would have, for my baccalaureate, I had a 16 on a 20. That is good grade. But I know that I could have done better if she wasn't the one grading me on my mm. oral skills. Yeah, that's sad. So when I told her, she made this face like, how did you manage to have this grade with the grade I gave you? And it, it was it was written on her face that she had given me a bad grade because she didn't like me. And I'm like, this is insane. I hate her. Yeah. I'm still living her seven years later. <laughs> Injustice. Actually, yeah. it's, um, we have another podcast coming up about the education in France. Like you said, you only have one or two hours of English. And here in Finland, it's four hours of the foreign language. Um, until we go to the university where I, no actually we still have four hours at the university so we are getting double the education from the start and we don't have anything dubbed on the TV only children's shows and not even all of them uh, we had uh, like Spider-Man and X-Men and stuff like this when I was young and it was in English and we had to read the subtitles so we hear all the languages from a, yen a very young age and um, I think the education here is good in France I would um, like I think you have the this kind of education that my mother had when she was in school for English because she was thought that if you don't know how to say the things you want to say in a perfect way in a grammatically correct sentence, don't say them, which obviously is not the case. It's better to try and talk. It comes naturally after some time. And um, I actually enjoyed my English lessons at the university. And I remember um, I was studying chemistry for one year before uh, switching to physics. And I was so surprised that in the beginning you have an uh, exam for the level of English and you had the C, B and A group. And I have like I was shocked that there are people that know less English at the university in France than we learn when we are children here in Finland. Yeah, it's not required, really. When I had changed uh, my major and I came into a class like two weeks in and I went in, I, I didn't know anyone there. So I didn't know, know, I didn't know the level of everyone. So the teacher says hello and I start talking in English with her <laughs> because it's my English teacher. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? naturally yeah yeah and then i i do the first lesson and i'm like oh my god i'm fluent in english and these people cannot make a sentence oh we were literally given words and have to put them back in order like a child and i was in the second year of higher education i'm like wow this is insane so I was like sleeping in my English class because there was nothing there for me to learn. <laughs> they were learning how to make sentences and my English didn't really improve since then. So you can hear, I can make a sentence. Yeah, 
talk for hours with the Finnish friend. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do with this? So I, after two or three classes, I had like one hour a week. What are we supposed to do with one hour a week? But I came to her and I said, you know, I'm bored. Can I do anything else, please? If you want me to be there to just show that I'm not doing anything else than English, let me like work on my computer, do anything else than just listening to people who cannot make sentences. I'm not shitting on them. They they weren't properly teached before, but I was losing my time. And I was like, please let me do anything else. I'm not learning anything here. So she just said, I'm going to email you the exam and the date where you have to give me your paperwork and just stop coming. Oh. And the best class we I had was a debate class. Oh, yeah. I loved that class. Yeah, it was really great. They knew that we already have more than the level that was required. Because when you do the licenses, the three years that we were into. In the second year, they ask you to be a B2 level. And we were already in this class C2 level. So they knew that there was nothing else for us to like really learn doing like grammar and stuff like that. So they make us debate each other that we actually like learn to speak English and how to formulate thinking in English. And it was like a really, really great class. It, my best class I ever had in English. And then on the second semester, you weren't there, but they put us in normal classes again. And I had to learn vocab and everything like that again. And I'm like, why? Why do I have... I, I'm doing a major in physics and my vocab that I have to learn is about cinematography. Why? There is This is nonsense. I had to learn like about traveling and and how to make uh, the the different words for the camera angles and everything like that. And I'm like, this is not what I'm majoring into. This is not the vocab that I need. That's a very weird subject. And another point about this is that when we were giving giving uh, presentations in the English class in the first semester, I was talking with the people in my class and they have seen me struggle learning chemistry in French because I like I told you I didn't speak French when I came to France I learned it in two or three months by listening and repeating and writing a lot of notes in the classrooms and when I opened my mouth and talked English they refused to speak with me because my level of English was so much better than theirs and I was telling them that you have seen me not been able to form a sentence in French and now I can speak in French with you guys so what's the problem it's just the other way around now that my English is better than theirs uh, in the end I enjoyed my time in France I would love to live abroad again at some point but it's also it's not that easy to find a job as a foreigner in a different country Yeah, and because you speak French, but it's easier for you, at least in the beginning, to go for, with English. And most of the people here don't speak English. Yeah. When I was working like summertime jobs, uh, I used to be the only one who could speak English. And I was a, a florist. And this guy used to come and get bouquets. He spoke only in English. And then I spoke back in English and the guy hugged me Whoa! because it was the first person and he was like so thankful to be able to speak in English to someone who could understand him. And when I worked uh, in another store uh, doing a cashier and I could talk in English with some people, they were like, thank you, someone who can talk to me and Whenever someone was not speaking French, I was called whatever the language was. Ah, okay. Because everyone can turn back to English. Yeah, mostly, mostly yeah. 
we could at least under, understand each other. I was a, there was a Spanish one and we made a, like a mix of English and Spanish because I had like, I have a few notions of, Eng, uh, of Spanish. So we made like a bit of both and then it worked. And we were able to understand each other. Even though I was mixing Spanish and English, she was doing the same. And it worked and we understood each other. In, but in French, we are not, like you said, pushed to just have a conversation. That's what I, I actually teach English a bit. And that's what I said. If you don't have the proper noun that you are looking for, the proper vocab, you can always define what you meant. Because every word in the dictionary has a definition. So if you don't have the word table, for example, you can always say, you know, the thing where you eat. Or you know that. You can point it. You can say the, the action where you can do with it. Yeah. And the person that is right next to you, that is probably someone who speaks better English than you can understand what you are saying because they have every vocab and they can actually help you and say, oh, you mean table. And then you say, yes, this is table that I meant. You learn something and you got to express yourself. But in French, it's, it's not how it's taught. We have to have proper vocab. And if you don't use the proper vocab, just shut up. Mm. This is a huge difference because we are thought... Like you said, just explain the word, make a detour around it. And maybe at the end of the conversation, you know the word now. You can use it in the future. Um, this, was also, oh, this was also how I learned French. I had the basic vocabulary after a couple of months. And then I can express myself. And I learned a lot of words. And I actually, always when I heard a new word, I asked the, the French people to uh, tell me how it's written so that I made a mental note in my head uh, about the writing of this word and then it stuck with me. I did this for more than a year before I was fluent enough with in the language and I think that's more important than having the perfect grammar and vocabulary and that's also why we are doing this podcast in English. I think we can reach a wider audience, obviously. Many people understand English. And uh, it's so fun talking in English with you because it's not the first language to either one of us. So we are on the same level or same page about it. Yeah, we both make mistakes. But on that, there is something in French, uh, in France, on the on social media. And people actually like to refer to them as such. I don't know if it exists in English, but they are called grammar nazi. Oh, yeah. Grammar nazis. It ex exists in English as well. Yeah. And in French, it's like really something. And people are like, you made a mistake. And that's all they're going to remember your mistake in French because you have to be perfect or shut up. Mm. And... Like, I don't know which people really love to be called a Nazi, <laughs> but I don't. I don't want to be, like, close to that thing that is Nazi. So I don't want to be that. And express yourself, even if it's not well um, thought out or well put or anything. You have the right to tell what you want to tell. And say what you want to say. That's why we are doing this. Because we wanted to talk. And and we'll get into detail later. But we have like a special life. Both of us. That's true. And yeah. And that's what makes us friends as well. Because we understood each other. And that's not. the Our stories are not. Really like put into the world. It's something that. Most people just don't talk about. You keep it locked down for your for yourself or maybe your closest friends and family. 
but you don't really speak it onto the world. And I think I've missed that, knowing that I wasn't alone when it happened. Yeah. And and having someone to understand. Yeah. Basically, because you can tell the story, any story, whatever the story is, if the person doesn't know, didn't live it, they can say they understand it. They can try to understand it. And you can do whatever you want. They won't. Yeah, it, we didn't have the easiest upbringing. <laughs> but I hope that with these episodes, our audience has the courage, courage to start speaking other languages. And I think this is a perfect note where to end this episode. Or do you have something to add? No, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's all for this episode. Uh, we invite you to follow us on social media. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook and any podcast platform. If you have any questions or something you would like us to address, you can always email us at theoutspoken2 at gmail.com. We thank you and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Dun, dun, dun. In the next episode, they got me union help because we didn't knew anything. Like if it was my first job. <laughs>